Okay, so this is going to be the final episode of the Crash and Burn Journal for the Soulbound series that my group has started playing in. Um, so if you if you see this video and you you go make sure you go watch the first and the second one because otherwise it won't make any sense. Also, of course, spoilers if you're planning on running Crash and Burn. Um, I think we might have like changed or our GM changed a bit of stuff, but I don't know what has and hasn't been changed. So this is just kind of my heads up to you. Um, but last session we made it underground. We escaped some ghosts and we partied, partied, uh, made allies with a goblin in their clan, which is unlikely, but they escorted us through the rest of the tunnels, um, which was very nice. We actually got out of our combat that way. Um, so catching up with the third session now, um, they escorted us all the way to a downed airship, uh, that was being repaired. This is an airship from our fleet. Um, but as we get there, the dwarves are trying to get everything together. Their captain is dead. So our captain that we've managed to protect and is traveling with us becomes the new captain because they are a ship without a captain and we have a captain without a ship. So, um... We kind of catch up, reporting with everyone, um, and we decide we need to kind of protect this area while the dwarves are getting the ship up into the air again. Um, and the dwarves are very selective that we are not allowed to touch the engines of the ship because of the like material and their clan hood. And, yeah, so we, we, we can't really help uh, get the ship off the ground, but there are things we can do to protect the area. Um, and that is the kind of the first half, the first quarter of the session. Most of the session is just a giant combat, which felt really cool. Um, but eventually the, the goblin does come back to us, um, later in the day saying their clan has pretty much all died through the undead horde that we weren't able to finish off earlier. Um, and they are after us. So we realize like we've only got so much time to prepare defenses before we can before a big fight um so the first part of the session is us doing our different things to try to protect the zone um and with this we each kind of get three chances to roll and determine what we're doing i looked at the endeavor rules now and it seems like a lot of the endeavor rules are make three rolls to do stuff so this is, we're we're kind of loose on endeavor at this point uh downtime if you don't know yeah um so a few things we can do um, there's a giant hull cannon on the front of the ship. Um, our archer wants that cannon up. Um, the archer is also the only one, I think, with any ballistic skill. So uh, they put a lot of time into that. They don't have any crafting skill. Um, so there's a little bit of like awkwardness at the beginning trying to figure out what to do. But you can attempt crafting without the crafting skill. It's just a mind check. The character has three mind, which is pretty good for us. Um, I don't know if anybody in the party... Maybe our nun has a four in soul, but most of us, our high stat is a three. So that's, that's really good. Um, so they repair the hull of the cannon. Our orc named Guy finds a gun from another crash ship and just reattaches it here. So we not just have a whole cannon, but we have another firearm attached to the ship to work with. Um, our nun, Valerie, uh, might have done the most work for us, actually. Um, they spent time uh, saying a prayer over the, the sort of graveyard that the dwarves had made to the side. Uh, this turns out to be really important because when a like semi army of ghosts is attacking you, you want to make sure they can't resurrect your dead. Um, so that did not come into account later on because of their efforts. Uh, then they took time to raise the morale of the crew, which against undead opponents means just a lot of fear effects. So that actually turned out really valuable. And then they spent their last time trying to help me, um, which was very nice of them. But the help action <laughs> has been very unlucky thus far. So next episode, though, it does actually make the difference in something. So it, it does help, but roles have been all over the place in this game. Um, my plan is because we know that there's a bunch of enemies coming after us. I start setting up like a perimeter. So setting up guards, traps, whatever. Um, I don't have like a layout of what the zone, the combat's going to be like yet, but I'm just kind of working with the DM like this, like my, my character understands traps and can set up some pretty like rudimentary stuff here. Um, and we, we make that work. Um, what pretty much will happen is the enemies come into a zone and then the one zone they funnel into, 
will be difficult terrain for pretty much anything that isn't a ghost because ghosts don't really care about terrain that much. Uh, but this still proves very valuable because there's a lot of like skeletal and uh, zombie swarms. So we we kind of make a really good choke point with that. Um, but combat starts. So we've got our big cannon. We've got a small gun. Um, we're pretty much all on a ship. And our goal is to make sure enemies don't make it to the ship because that's where our civilians are. Um, also, the little goblin that we parlayed with earlier um that was the word i was looking for not party yeah is aboard the ship and has pretty much decided he's going to come with us because he doesn't want to die to the undead horde and we like him so we take him in uh, <laughs> um but the combat starts with two swarms um one swarm of 10 enemies one of 20 enemies um we go over the rules for swarms and find out swarms are a very serious threat <laughs> uh the way swarms in this game work is they pretty much every hit point is a ghoul or a skeleton or whatever in the swarm. And when they attack, they just attack based for 1d6 for every enemy. Um, which means if you're fighting against 20 enemies, they're going to roll some sixes and get you. Like no matter how high your defense is, they're, they're going to tear you apart. Um, so yeah, swarms are a serious threat. Um, and this comes into what I talked about in the last episode where... Our party needs to work on coordination. Um, things have not necessarily gone well. Um, so the plan sort of is our archer who goes first in combat is like, I'm just going to shoot out stuff before it gets to us. My plan going next in combat is I'm going to take the gun because my character, I'm a melee assassin with daggers. I'm not throwing my only daggers at them. Um, so I don't have a ranged option. I take the gun that the orc got for us, which... Sorry, orc friend, if you meant to use the gun, but you have a magic attack at range and I don't. Um, so I end up using the gun. And then um, we have another dual wielder spellcaster that decided they are going to go out in front of us and pretty much set up a magic wall to try to keep the enemies out. Um, and this is kind of the problem in our coordination. Um, because the magic wall is actually a good idea to try to keep enemies out because they have to make a check to get in. Um, but the problem is that range attacks are harder to make into that zone. <laughs> right. So we, we don't know, like, are we trying to kill the enemies before they get to us? Are we just trying to hold them back? Because this is a timed encounter. We're pretty much just trying to survive until the dwarves get the ship in the air and we can fly away. Um, we really should have had time before the attack to make plans, and pretty much none of us thought. So, we, we we need to be better about coordinating, we need to be better about making plans in advance when that is available to us, which it was, and we did not take advantage of it. So, that 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 is, that is on all of us to work better together. Um, but the difficult terrain is really good because it takes the swarms... Uh, more time to get to us which is more time for us to just shoot them out um yeah the good thing is the swarm i don't think any of the swarms even the ones in future waves i don't think any of them made it to us one of them might have made it to i think one did make it to us but it was nearly dead so it wasn't really much of a threat to begin with um but next turn is the problem because the uh, chosen big boy spooky ghost that we didn't kill last time shows up and he's got champions with him now. Um, which for a big boss fight, it really should be like a chosen and then one or two champions and then some like little guys. So this is, this is all out there. And these guys hit hard. Um, I know one of them is an executioner. If you play Warhammer Fantasy, you might be able to tell what it is. I have no idea. Uh, dude with a giant cleaver pretty much just cleave through our archer and hit our medic on the backswing. Um, thing to note here is our archer has a mouth on him. Uh, the entire, like the first time we met this guy and then in this combat, the entire time he's just insulting this undead man. Um, pretty much saying he's like a failure of Sigmar because he died, which I think he died serving Sigmar, but... It, it, whatever um the archer has a mouth on him and he gets focused down pretty hard uh even with having a pretty dedicated healer and a good healer or that um there's only so much you can do when you're getting focused down by bosses <laughs> um 
But the same turn that the champions show up, we are attacked by ghosts from underneath, which somebody in our party actually did make the comment that they're totally going to just fly underneath our ship as it's being repaired because they're ghosts and they can do that. Uh, they were correct. So I'm the only one that's in the part of the ship that can quickly get downstairs. So I abandon my gun and go downstairs and start attacking. Um, so I'm pretty much fighting with this little goblin. I don't want the goblin to die, but I'm not super attached to them either. I'm pretty much down there for the civilians because one of our short term's goal isn't just to get out of here. It's to get out of here with the civilians, which we've done a pretty good job protecting thus far. So I have to spend like my two next turns downstairs uh, fighting these guys and protecting civilians. The goblin nearly dies, but doesn't. And that is important. The goblin does survive the encounter. Uh, the goblin is also more powerful than I think everyone in the party. Um, but he's a coward, so he didn't. <laughs> he helped. I don't think he made a huge impact on the combat, though. Um, so that goblin is going to be an NPC that will continue with us for quite a bit. Um, but um, when I get back upstairs, another swarm spawned. Um, so I'm trying to attack them with a gun because my gun has the spread trait. I think it's spread, which means when I hit, I can attack things nearby. Sort of like cleave, but for range. Um, things go downhill very fast at this point. Um, our archer, who's been getting focused down because he won't stop taunting. It's, his, it's not even the DM's fault for focusing someone down. Our archer is taunting them. Um, the archer finally goes down. Um, and about this time, the ship lights up. The engineers have it working. We are one turn left in combat. And I, th I think at this point, it's like the boss and one other dude. I think we took the champions out, one of which was a spellcaster that messed us up. Um, and our, our, our goal is pretty much survive this round. Try to make sure our archer doesn't die. Um, and this is when we make a weird discovery that I'm actually still very surprised by. Um, getting people up when they're in the, the like dying state for this game, which I, I don't, I think it's called mortally wounded, whatever it's called, is a medicine check. The only person in our party that has medicine is me, the blood god assassin. <laughs> and I took medicine pretty much as my character having like anatomical knowledge as an assassin. Um, but it turns out like, I like I now have the responsibility of picking up party members <laughs> when they're dying. Um, we might have to go over the the rules for dying again because the little like cheat sheet we got doesn't seem to have all the rules for it. I digress. Um, I spend my entire turn use my metal to boost my one point of training <laughs> in medicine, <laughs> which does not give you very much, but it's an extra die, so we take it. Um, we managed to bring the archer back so he's not going to bleed out because he I did fail his first death save. Again, I don't remember what that's called, but. Um, but yeah, we, we, we make it out. We make it out. Our archer is nearly dead. Um, the downside is that we do not manage to kill this boss. Again, it is everything just to escape um, as more and more an undead were starting to flood us. So we fly away. Um, surely this enemy will not come back a second time to fight us. <laughs> surely. He, I, I actually, we, we talked about this in our next session. And that, that is the, the point my character is making is we have traveled, we have gotten a day's uh, travel through the air. There's no way this undead is going to follow us. I actually want him to follow us though. Cause I, I think he's like a really cool enemy. I'd like to see him come back. I, I like the archer just constantly taunting him, even though our, I don't know, we don't have a strong, like, armored up frontline character. Um, we have a few of us that have, like, pretty good defenses, but we don't have, like, heavy armor and a shield. And I actually was thinking that might be a really good character to bring out. It's just a character that just stacks defense. Um, but I digress. I don't want my character to die because they've had some really cool moments. Um, and we make it out. Um, that also serves our party's short-term goal because we not only escaped, but we escaped with the civilians because um, I went below deck and saved them. Even though the goblin might have been okay, the goblin nearly died, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, the goblin survives as well with us, so we have a normal human 
alchemist. Because <laughs> the goblins decided they're a human now. Um, to travel with us. And yeah, we successfully make it to Brightspear. Um, although everything that happens in Brightspear is next session, which actually happened yesterday, but I I don't know. I don't think I'm going to continue the series um, because I don't see it gaining a lot of traction. Although I do kind of like having a video journal of what we're doing. Um, I haven't always been good as a player of taking notes. And having this series is really good to have me not only take notes as we're playing, because I, I want to like not miss anything in the recording, but it also gives me a good chance to reflect on the events of the session after it's happened. Um, so I think from a content creation point, it's bad to do. But personally, I think it might help me as a player to take this time to kind of reflect on things and do that. So I don't I don't know if I'm going to continue the Adventures in Bright Spear or not. Um, for anyone that has been watching the series, if you have a comment or opinion, leave it in the comments. Do the other YouTube stuff. Like if you're watching these and not followed, I I have so many followers on Twitch, but I'm kind of abandoning the Twitch channel for YouTube stuff. So I don't have a lot of followers anymore. I I digress. Do YouTube stuff if you want. I'm not your dad. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Thanks for being here for these three episodes. Um, overall, I am really enjoying Soulbound. Um, I I think the system is really cool. I think Warhammer stuff in general, this includes like 40k, is a really good job of feeling epic. And I feel like the uh, Age of Sigmar RPG system has also does a really good job of making your characters feel epic and powerful. Um so yeah, I think it's a really good series. I'm going to do a video probably in two weeks talking about my overall thoughts on the seer the system um, when I do my like Sunday game recommendation. Um, but yeah, this week is going to be Amber Diceless, so check out that in a few days. I digress. I'm going away to do video editing now. Thanks for being here. I'll see you.